What is good everyone? William Idell back again with another unboxing and review and today I am going to be unboxing and reviewing the Inky Gold Crow GC60 by Color Light. Alright, so let's get into it. All right, so first of all, I want to give a shout out to Inky Tech for reaching out to me and asking me to do a review on this product. Um, since I've got it and tested it out, I have to say this is this is quite something. Very nice. Um, it's 60 watts. It's a bicolor, so it does daytime, and it does uh, cooler temperatures, and it. It's powered by battery and what's cool about it too you can actually charge your phone in the back of it right here with the, the cable that comes with it all right so I'm gonna show you um, everything that comes inside the box uh, starting off with this bag here we have this little traveling case nice simple um, after carrying it around as you can see I've already got some scratches on it or whatnot as far as making an investment into like maybe a hard case, I'm not sure. This is pretty hard. It's pretty, you could tell that it's built really good. I mean, it says that it could withstand rain. So I've seen uh, shots with this online with people testing it out outside in the weather. So it's, it's pretty durable. Um, so I'm not sure. I mean, this right here should do the job. But if you're traveling overseas or on a plane, I would say get a hard case. It also comes with uh, this little, this is made pretty durable. Also, it's a little mount that you can stick to the bottom. This has little uh, drill holes all the way around it so you can make all type of attachments to it. So if you want to go get some small rigs or something like that, I'm going to just attach this right to the bottom. just like that, right? So if you're doing a running gun, or if you wanna attach this to a bigger light modifier, cause you can do that, because this right here comes out. So if you wanna attach like something like a little small soft box and attach it on there, you have the option, which is really, really cool. It does come with a hard reflector. It's a little small joint right here. And you can attach that on right here. And I think so like that. And I think you have to lock it. Hold on a second. Here we go. It's just a little silver tab thing right here. Lock that in place. Yeah. Here we go. Just like that. And the way you turn it on, you have to turn this clockwise. See that light right there in the back? That's pretty cool. And it gets really bright, really, really, really bright. So this is me um, walking up on the scene. I have my camera mounted to my DJI uh, Ronin. And as you can see, I'm just standing there holding the light and you can see how bright it is. Holding it above my head, got some light. So you can imagine if I was shooting this through like a diffuser or something like a curtain or something. Just a you know diffuser on the mount, it would soften it up and really give a nice little look. And I'm pointing it now to the back of the wall, which is white, so you can get a good bounce also. And that's more of a daytime color. That's at 100% right there. I'm sure you guys can see that. And to change the color, you want to turn it, I think, clockwise, like halfway, and hold it like that. Let me see, let me try it one more time. There we go. And you'll see it in the back and you can change the, the color temperature like that. Well, let me get back. Wait, there we go. Why? What is taking so long? This part is kind of tricky though. You might have to work on this because I've been on, when I was shooting on set, I was doing like it was telling me to turn it and hold it, but it's almost like, there we go. So I was changing color temperature now. And I'm up to 65K right now, 65 Kelvin, right? And you have to do the same thing if you want to turn 
turn it back. So you want to twist it and hold it halfway. Once you do that, the temperature will pop up. It should. This is the only thing I don't like about it, right? Because it's like, <laughs> at what point is it's the beginning mark of when you're turning it counterclockwise, you know? So, all right, maybe I have to just hold it longer. I don't know. And there we go, changing the temperature again. This is getting warmer. So you got your warm temperature and you got your cool temperature, all right? Also, they have effects on here too. So I'm gonna also show you in the footage I shot. So if you turn it halfway the opposite way, it's gonna have these little menus pop up, right? You got like your lighting effect, uh, has three three lighting bolts on there. You could do two, one, has a TV effect, a broken light bulb effect, a SOS effect, a camera effect. So let's say we just do the lightning, right? On three, three lightning bolts. Let's see what happens. I think, there we go. You turn the power up and it should go off. There we go. Of course, you don't want to, you know, change the color temperature back to like something more cooler. And, but that's your little lightning effect right there. That's pretty cool. So to go back to the menu again, you have to twist it back to the left and hold it. Oh, let me get it up there. Yeah, I think this is probably the only thing I don't like about it is the sub menus, which would be like uh, getting to the lighting effects or changing the color temperature because it should be a little more easier. See, now it look like it's locked, so I have to keep turning it to the right to open it back up. Yeah, I think I was turning it too far. So, SOS, camera flashes. All right, so let me test my theory. Let me turn it halfway this way. Yeah, I was just turning it too far. So. The way it looks, you don't have to turn it like super long the way I was doing it, like all the way like that. It's just a small uh, twist to the right or to the left. There's your camera flash. It's under that 80%. What's cool about it too, at the top right, when we cut this effect off. Yeah, that's probably gonna be my only dislike about this is, you know, finding that sweet spot so you can turn that effect on and off. All right, so. Up there at the top right, it'll show you um, how much time you have left on this battery, like right now, at, at different percentages. So I'm at 30%, but if I turn it down to like 9%, the time at the top is going up. So it says now at 8% light, I have 24 hours to use this. But if I go up to 60%, it says I have, it's calculating, three hours and 46 minutes. I go up to 100%, 120% it says I have an hour and 43 minutes on 120% all right and it shows you on the left over here your battery percentage so it says I'm at 96% battery power and then on the far right it actually lets you know how, how long you know you got until that dies out which is pretty cool then you turn it left like that to turn it off all right so which is cool about this also has all these different threads on it so if you want to mount something extra on there or if you want to buy multiple lights you know you can connect them together to create a bigger light and you have your mount right here for mounting on your tripods and yeah this little switch here if you hold this down you can bend this so if you actually put this on the opposite way which is backwards you sit it down on something um, or uh, you can hang it from a something like that if you have a quarter inch mount coming down from up top. So it's, it's a lot of different, I really love this handle because of all the different screws on here. It's just giving you so many options to mount uh, different things, which is pretty cool. And the durability is just awesome. But I'm gonna show you some of the, the clips that I've uh, shot. Um, I had to test it out, right? So called a family member of mine and he does security and i was like well let me just shoot a little you know, mini commercial for you you know outside in the dark because i want to see how it holds up outside in the dark i'm gonna show you guys the behind the scenes of that and walk you through that that process of what i did uh, as far as the light setup all right so this is me in the dark finally cutting the light on so this is uh actually the same clip i showed earlier but this uh pov is from my head mount which is my sr360 go 3 so as you can see once again um 
me testing up the light and its power and its strength and me now changing the color temperature to a little more cooler temperature and showing you guys how bright and extensive the power of this light is and I'm holding it over my head yeah so power test confirmed I think this is pretty bright it doesn't have a widespread it's pretty narrow but um I'm pretty sure that could be rectified with something like a larger softbox or something but the power factor is going to be an issue because it's only 65 watts so if you do attach something it's not going to be that strong but you will get a softer light and i do believe it may spread a little more but yeah it's pretty narrow light so i'm over here by the side of the house and cutting the light on and i have it on this um, pretty sturdy heavy c stand and one thing i noticed is that this thing is pretty light so i was able to move the stand where I want it um, quickly, but no issues. I didn't bring any sandbags, but uh, <clears throat> the light is pretty light. So, and the wind wasn't blowing. We have these houses up here blocking the wind. So, you know, my goal was to uh, make this seem like it was moonlight or, you know, some type of street light coming through the light. I mean, through the, coming through the window, excuse me. Oh, oh. Now I'm about to shoot the first scene with Travis. Treat trail. Start start in that room in A. I'm gonna meet you in A. Leave the door crack a little bit. Yeah, just leave it alone. Yeah. So I'm trying to direct, as you can see, and I'm walking through, and I'm trying to move slow. He's on the other side. Come around this way. One thing I noticed is that um, I should have checked my settings on my camera as far as the shutter speed because. His flashlight was uh, creating some flickering in my shot that I didn't notice till post-production. As you can see, um, I have this little um, newer monitor that I just bought that I'm using on the camera so I can see better instead of using the back of my LCD on my screen. And I just have him walking through acting like he's checking security, you know, doing a little, you know, security checks. As you can see, you can see the light coming through the window. Well, one thing I did notice um, that I should have did was bring my smoke machine. If I would have bought that, that would have created a little more volumetrics. And the volumetrics would have made it look a little more cinematic. So um, either way, let me show you a quick clip of uh, what I created in post-production of that scene. So that's set, and now I'm just gonna bring my C stand down and just move it to another part of the location we're shooting in, and just like that. All right, so in this next shot, I had Travis come around the corner, and he's gonna make a right and meet me with the light that's right behind my back shoulder, and we're gonna walk directly into it. On the left, you can see the before and after, ungraded and color graded the shot. And on the right, you can see the behind the scenes of me filming it. So he pulled up um, with his car, he has these flashing lights, um, security lights, and I thought, you know, I'd get a low angle shot of him just like pulling up right under the street light. And I was gonna use the portable light to um, kind of force more light from that angle because that's the source point light right now. So I don't want, you know, the shot looks super artificial having, you know, other light coming from another direction. But what I did think about, after this is if I had two of these, I could have stuck one at the beginning of the um, drive port and that would have gave off a little um, light in the back because it was like extremely dark back there. The only light that was really visible was that porch light you could see back there on the house. And to me, it wasn't bright enough. So I think with two or three of these on the set, as far as like filming at night would be nice because you could have your key light, your back light, you have a different side light. And my seat stand, as you can see, going really up there. The, uh, the pistol on. 
So I'm trying to direct them and I'm grabbing my gimbal. I'm using 16 millimeter uh, Sigma. He won shots right. shots of the Seahawk right, cool. on his tag. He funny. So I'm going in low, trying to get shots of the tag. And shots of him coming out the car. Have him walking forward, do a little pan around. And then I'm gonna show you like the um, a clip of the scene at a color graded before and after. To push it even further, um, shout out to Puma. Puma sent me these shoes, these um, these nice sneakers, and I want to test out the light outside before I posted the video. So this is me on Tybee Island, and I'm shooting behind the scenes with the Insta uh, 360 Go. No, the Insta, yeah, the Insta 360 Go 3. Yeah, I said that right. So I'm putting on the shoes. I had to carry them around because I didn't want to walk in them and like, you know, put any dents or scratches, anything like that on them before I shot them to prevent, you know, extra work in post-production. And I have my Canon R6 set up. And right now, currently, I think I have the 35 millimeter on. And I'm about to turn the LCD screen around to see if I can see uh, what am I shooting since I'm, you know, shooting self-portraits and I have a remote in my hand. And this is the first shot, it was kind of off, but you can see the light where it's hitting on my leg. So, instead of using like flashes, what I would usually do as a photographer, you know, you can actually use these constant lights actually as, you know, fill light, another key light. And these are really great when it comes to commercial photography because it really adds depth to the shot. So, but the problem is with the Inky, uh, this this light is that it's not strong enough like look where the sun is at you know so when you're dealing with lights uh well, as you can see i'm swapping out my 35 for my 50 because I, I thought i needed a closer shot it was just too wide for me and this, the, the main focus is the shoe so i'm fine with making that swap out on the lens but back to the sunlight the sunlight is so powerful it's it's just going to overpower a 60 watt light you need something in the range of like 300 and up. And, you know, 150 may help, I mean, do the job. It, it would add a way more light than I was looking for. Even, you know, it's funny, even a reflector, I think, would have made a more brighter light because it's reflecting directly what the sun is giving off. It's not being controlled, you know, but that light is a controlled light and it's only telling you that, hey, I can only go up to 60 watts as far as in power. So, if I would have, well, I do have my reflector out there. I'll show you that. Matter of fact, if you guys like and subscribe to the video, I'll do a second video just on this uh, this day right here because I shot more footage. But primarily, I'm showing you this right now because I just want to showcase the light. But I'll show you what the reflector did when it came to light compared to what the Inky is doing with the 60 watts. Now, as a company, I think once they you know start to grow and expand, once they start getting up to 150 and 300 you know it's really gonna make a difference when it comes to shooting on location so um i have another light by amaran you can stick a a v battery on that and shoot outside but that's limited just as this just as like this light is limited to time also but in any case this light will do a great job if you know you were shooting in a location like i'm at right now with the sun directly over you so if say for instance we were under some trees or in a more shaded area i'm pretty sure the it would it would be more as you can see i'm trying to push the light up closer too because um i saw the shot while i was doing i was going through the images so i can see i'm pointing it out right now that i put, pushed it up a little closer and right now i'm just trying to get a good angle that i can showcase the shoes sitting on that thing was really you know troublesome but you can see the light hitting my shoe right now you see that so it's a big difference um when it comes to commercial photography because once you go and start playing with different channels and different you know grays and neutrals in photoshop and controlling different elements um of light on your image you can really make you know the image pop and I'm moving the light a little more closer. I move the camera a little closer. I kind of want to like narrow in. If I had spent more time on this, 
I probably would have got the shot I want. Or if I would have took the LCD screen, the monitor that I had out of my bag that I forgot and put it on there, I would have been able to see better on that monitor. But yeah, you can see the light on my leg. You see how close it is. But that's 60 watts. Now imagine if it was a little more stronger. So I think I was shooting a little close to wide open. I was somewhere around maybe 2.8 in aperture. And I think I had cranked up the shutter to I can't remember. I'll put the settings in the um, in the bio below. But yes, outside of just shooting video, these lights can be used for photography. So you can use this in a studio or anywhere you're at. You know, use this as a nice fill light to get some really dynamic shots. So you gotta think outside the box when it comes to these portable lights. All in all, I have to say this is a really great light. I've been using uh, Amaran products uh, as of late as far as lights and all of them I have to have plugged in outside of my uh, 60XS, which you can mount a V-mount battery to. So, and this is a great light also, but this is 60 watts, just as like this 60 watts. I should do a side-by-side -side test video. You guys leave a comment um, if you want to see a side-by-side -side test video as far as like just uh, the quality in, in the build. But having a battery already built in is pretty sweet. And now as far as the sun, it's not strong enough, as I said before, to overpower the sun. You'll probably need something like close to like 150 or 300, especially if you're like outside and the sun is like at its peak. You're not, you know, at dust or dawn you're getting that sweet light but 60 watts can do great i think if you're in areas that have shade or it's not as too bright if the sun isn't dominating the area this will really come in handy for us either in photography or video but you have to plan it out you have to go plan out you know check out the scene and make sure you know so you can see what you're stepping into you don't want to just have like hella lights on set but the build solid uh this right here is just and it just, <laughs> this handle alone, it just lets you, yeah, I'm about to go handle some business. I mean, this is a really great build. Uh, my only thing I don't like, again, is the getting to the sub menu as far as like on the effects and the um, changing, you know, the color temperature. I think mm, it should maybe be an easier way to access it. Or maybe I'm just doing it wrong. Maybe I just have to learn, you know, the sweet spot. But, you know, if I have to go through that just to find a sweet spot on how to get that up, you know, that's kind of, you know, slowing me down. I don't want to be sitting here and everybody like, you ready? You ready? I'm like, hold up. I haven't got it yet. Hold up. Hold up. You know what I mean? I want to be able to just, boom, access it just like that. But that's my, own, my only, you know, negative re re review of the product, man. Other than that, this is... A handy light I'm already thinking of like ways I can implement this you know just out in the field I mean in, in studio I have lights which is great and um but also this can come in handy if you're shooting indoor and you need to stick this light somewhere that um a bigger light can't go because it is kind of smaller you know so you will be able to get this in certain type of areas but you know overall a solid solid light I give it like a 7.5 or 8. If this was powerful, way powerful than this, I would really be in love with it, you know, but I don't think they have the technologies there yet. Or if it is, I, it's probably outside of my budget. But this is great for the budget. You know, I think it's like around 250 or 260 bucks or something like that. Uh, I forgot the price. I'll drop it a uh, link in the, um, the bio. But far as the price, you know, if you're a running gun photographer or videographer, or um, if you want to make some content in your office, whether you do whatever it is you do, hair, makeup, or uh, you just want to, you know, shoot some, you know, if you cook, you know, you can mount this above your food, you can get different angles. It's lightweight, you know, I don't say lightweight, it's about maybe five, maybe about four or five pounds, but it's durable, you know. If you guys want, just drop in the comments as far as like ideas of how to use this light in your, your office or studio, whatever it is you're doing as far as creating content. And how can you use this to create nice light? Because once again, outside of this hard reflector, this hard light, you guys can always go get uh, a soft reflector and produce some really soft, nice light. Let me grab, so something like this right here, right? Right, so. Let's open this up and attach this 
Bowen's mounts are universal, so these should just pop on here. There we go. Lock this in place. There we go. That's soft light. So now you have a softer light, right? Let's see how soft this is. Nice soft light, right? And I'm at a hundred percent. So let's do like 60%. So something like this is, I would say on a budget manageable for someone like a small content creator, because you have a portable light you can take anywhere. So if you have a friend or someone like, oh, I want to create some content. We have a girl's night creating content, whatever, fellas, whatever it is. Bring over your light, bring over your soft box, and you have nice, you know, camera studio lighting. You know, you can shoot this on your phone or if you got a camera, but it's nice and it's soft and it gives off a professional look, right? And this is a face test right here. As you can see from the left to the right, but I'm using um, the light with the soft box attached. Then the one in the middle is just bare bulb. And the one on the far right is with the reflector attached to it. So you can see the difference in quality and how soft it is. And this is just at 50%, all right? And this is it with the color grade on. So you can see how strong the light is on the far right with the hard reflector that it can emulate the sun. And all the way to the left, when you wanna just do some soft filming. Under lighting, you got top lighting, you know, so it's, it's I, I give it a, like I said, I give it a seven or eight, you know, it's especially, like I said, if, if you're just starting off and um, professionals already know this is, this is a, a good, a good deal. Um, I would say try it out if you're professional, you know, go pick one up, check it out. It's worth it. But, um, if you're just starting off as a creator, this is a, this is pretty cool. You know, especially if you're going to be, you know, on the move, if you have clients and you're mobile, you could just bring this in a little small tripod and set this up, shoot your video. And if you got battery left on here, when you're done and your phone's dead, you can plug it in here and charge your phone. You know, I mean, you can't beat that. You're traveling you, with your book bag, your backpack, you stick it right there in your backpack. You know, easy to travel if you're uh, on the go shooting um, photography or film. So yeah, I could keep talking about this. This is pretty cool, but I'm in the video. I appreciate you guys for watching. And once again, thank you Anki Tech for uh, reaching out to me and asking me to do a review. You guys did a great job on this, man. I can't wait to see what else you guys put out there so by color and you know just far as like battery power so thanks a lot and if you guys are new to the channel make sure you subscribe and like the video if you like it and share it and follow me on instagram and tiktok at mr Model. all right so until the next one i see you guys later all right peace